Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Reduce your ping time and get faster speeds when you game at expressvpn.com slash funhouse. Welcome, everybody, to the Funhouse podcast. I'm going to be your host this week, James Willems, and I am joined by the... You know, I was really excited for these guests because this is going to be a sweet, awesome gamer cast. We're going to be talking game news and things we're into and kind of what we're playing. It was going to be a lot of fun. And then we all logged in to chat, and this is what I saw. A bunch. Look at these. Every single person. Okay. All right. We got Elise wearing a yellow beanie. Elise Willems. The yellow beanie. The yellow beanie. Okay. Then we got Omar Darmus wearing a yellow beanie. I got I got an extra one for you. With here. an oh, extra sorry. one. Just, go and get it, case. James. And then I'm super excited to have back Danny Pena, who is joining us. Except he showed up wearing a yellow beanie. <laughs> yes, and I'm back. <laughs> so we got the yellow beanie crew. I don't know how they coordinated this, but they did it. Um, yes, anyway, I'm really excited to have all of you guys on. Thank you so much for coming back. Danny, it's been too long. Welcome. Uh, thanks. Yeah, last time I was in New York City mm-hmm. when we when I was a uh, part here at when was it with, with Paris? Yeah, right. It was sometime yeah, yeah. last year. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it was a lot of fun um, that episode. But yeah, now I moved over here in uh, Los Angeles, man. Um, uh, Got to get used to the still the, the the whole timing difference, you know. But yeah, everything's cool. Besides, that. I haven't been going out really because of the whole you know quarantine. But um, hopefully, I could start going out sometime later this year. <laughs> I I know I know a couple people who have moved. And not like just small moves, but like major moves in their life during the last like year or so. Mm-hmm. And it's it's crazy because like in your case, it's like I mean, you moved from New York City, maybe maybe the most vibrant alive city on the planet, right? Okay, I think maybe overtaking Paris in the last century. I'm gonna say, <laughs> um, New York City, maybe one of the most vibrant cities on the planet. To Los Angeles, which is a contender, it's up there. It's one of the major cities of the world. Um, and it's just funny to think that you haven't been able to take advantage of any of that. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing. Yeah, yeah. Can it's you ju- imagine it's moving, doing strange. a big, big life change like that during all of this? Because like, you usually you move for work or whatever, and then you mm-hmm. move to a new city, spending a lot of money, living in a big city mm-hmm. or whatever for your job, and then everything went remote. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. it's got to be so demoralizing, yeah. I guess, to like a normal. Mm-hmm. Was there yeah. any like know. benefit to moving during? Like I think rents down in LA. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, honestly, um, I, I I was so used to New York. Um, with oh yeah. This I guess whole, mm-hmm. Yeah, with this whole COVID and everything, but over here, I haven't really been seeing anyone. Like I have a lot of friends here in, the, in LA that's yeah. part of the the industry and everything, and it's just been like hi, text, you know, through Twitter. That's it. Mm-hmm. I only seen like maybe, maybe like two or three, and that's it. That's mm-hmm. it. Out of everybody I know, but yeah, it's very, it's very different over here. One being your <laughs> co-host of Gamer Tag Radio, Paris Lily. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He came and we got to hang out for a bit. Yeah. So shout That's out to nice. Paris. With, I want to mention. I want to make sure I mention to um, you know Danny's been on this show before. He was joined by Paris Lily last time. Um, if you don't know who Danny Pena is, you got your eyes closed. You got the wool over your eyes. Um, Get but he is. Here. He's an award-winning podcaster. He's the creator and host of Gamer Tag Radio. He's been around for forever. He's played video games with Bill Gates. He's done all kinds of incredible gaming related things and just has been a, I, th- I think a force for good in this whole world of games, entertainment and stuff like that. And so um, mm-hmm. all kinds of great stuff. We're gonna make sure everyone can know where they can find you. But uh, yeah, I just yeah. thank you for coming back on. No, nah, thanks, and, and I love talking to y'all, man. Last time we had a blast, and mm-hmm. I can't wait to talk more about video games. And I, I have a question also for later. Yep. Got Godzilla versus Kong. I want to ask you about that later. Okay. We can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we can. We can we, so I have, I do have a bunch of gaming stories kind of lined up. That I feel like this. it was tough doing this podcast for a long time because it's always so gaming-focused, but then mm-hmm. there would just not be any news, especially it's kind of like movie stuff, right, with this year. Just the pandemic has caused a change and shift in the way marketing works, and there's just not like this constant flow of news. But there was actually some gaming stories this week, but I do want to kick it off with the question you asked right before we started because it was a great question. Godzilla yes. or King Kong. We saw the new trailer. I haven't actually watched the trailer yet, but we saw that there's a new trailer for the movie that people said would never come out so yeah let's let's jump right well i want to hear from you danny what do you yes. think godzilla or king kong by the way I, it was breaking news the uh, the movie got uh pushed back i think a week okay 
So it, I think it's coming out first in theaters, and then a mm-hmm. week after that, it's going to be on HBO Max. I just want to say that very quick. Okay. For That's me, I, did, for, did they make weird. a big deal out of everything being day and date? They did. For HBO Max? Yeah. They yeah. made a huge deal about that. <laughs> full yeah. full yeah. disclosure, <laughs> we are a subsidiary of Warner Media, so um, I, I'll, I'll just mention this as well. I don't know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> it doesn't sound like I'm the only one. Yeah. Nobody um, tells us nothing. Nobody tells us nothing. And you then when I watch, when I see something, when I watch it like everyone else, I go, what is going on? Yeah. Well, for yeah. me, I, I'm I'm going to go for uh, Kong. I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on Kong. Kong to okay. me is, he's a lot faster okay. um, than Godzilla. I think Godzilla is a lot stronger than Kong. Mm-hmm. But on the real, Kong has always been named as King Kong. So he's the king, man. Sure. So he has to, Godzilla has to earn that against him. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Danny, we'll see. Kong I also say this has to those, you. Uh, New York roots. Sorry. That's true. Uh, what is a god to a king? King to a god. That's what Kanye said to us. Oh, damn. Okay. Damn. So, damn, yes. at least you heard me. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm coming out so hard. <laughs> but, yes, he may be a King Kong, but is he yeah. a god? Zilla. That's all I'll I, say. I have more opinions, but I'm going to let yeah. Zilla speak. I'll, I, I mean, I will say, I'll say to what, <laughs> what you're saying about being a King Kong, Godzilla is a Godzilla. You know, so, I yeah. mean, Egypt, maybe there's some blurring there, but there is, you know, I would say king and then God in a lot of cases. So uh, there's something, yes. to be, something to be thought of there. But um, Omar, you had some strong feelings about this. What are you thinking? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely pro Godzilla in this mm-hmm. thing. OK, uh, I feel like giant lizard who uh, who is the equalizer for the planet coming in mm-hmm. and telling uh telling you know smashing a bunch of people for getting out of their lane fucking mm-hmm. up the planet godzilla comes in flattens it all out says okay time to reset let mother mother earth heal a bit mm-hmm. i'm all about that king kong yeah. i mean what does he do he comes in and he like grabs grabs someone goes up to well, the top of the building he, like what's well, what's the king kong's like king big uh, king, what's his, his theming thing? like his more his like kind of yeah like yeah what what's his compass mean? that's i think he was kind of like a this is what happens when you go into places where you don't belong like almost an anti colonial anti yeah, yeah and anti imperial okay, okay. kind of vibe it's like you don't belong here this isn't your place and when you came here and saw opportunity, right? You came here and you saw opportunity. You didn't realize the the hell that would unleash upon the world and and the people. The hell it. that is King Kong. I, yeah, no, I feel that. That's a good one. So okay, um, but still, King, Godzilla, King, giant lizard, Godzilla. Yeah, yeah, King Kong, revered by the other animals. You know, so, the, well, the somewhat smaller, the regular somewhat. size gorillas. Yes, yes, the regular size gorillas, but there are he has he has does have a lot of enemies we've seen, which I think kind of brings me to what I was going to talk about. How many how many tyrannosauruses has has King Kong snapped the neck of? Because that's kind of like the best way to train to fight a Godzilla. Yeah, is to like kill a dinosaur. He I has more Jurassic human, World movie. He has Maybe. more human enemies than that's true. Than, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but you know, you know what it is. Uh, I don't know. If you said you haven't watched the trailer, but it seemed like they're making making Godzilla look more like the villain. Yeah. Ooh. Well, that's what they did with Kong. That's what they did with the original. At the end, they're gonna get together. Yeah. Back when Bethy, back the first time this happened, that's what they did. There were two separate endings for the original Godzilla versus King Kong, and in Japan, Godzilla won, and in America, Kong won. So oh. that's yeah. that's amazing. Wait, what? F- that movie that's that ethnocentric not that, not that long ago. <laughs> yeah, the one from a really long time ago. Wait, one person said long time. Another one says it was a long time. Long. Ago. I mean, I, I guess it depends on the definition. It wasn't the Ice <laughs> yeah. Age, but like. <laughs> <laughs> no, were you talking like the one like from like nineties? Or no, the one the from Broderick? like the no, that's Godzilla. 60s. It was like the 60s. Okay, it was like okay, okay. Okay, yeah. monster, OG. monster oh, mash. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, um. Godzilla also bilingual, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Is he? English and Japanese. I have to believe it. Cody okay. RTD says Kong will be able to fight because of some outside source, mechanized weapons from humans, or weird clubs made of energy absorbing monsters. Interesting. So he's going to be outfitted. By human, because we 
we need to hear a, a champion's yeah. take down Godzilla. I mean, I, I just, I think that traditionally Godzilla is way larger than King Kong, but it appears in this film that they have changed the size. Like the Kong is continuing to grow and is now, cause like Godzilla is like the size of a skyscraper, just a He's massive huge. thing yeah. and can fire beams out of its mouth. But laser King beams. Kong, King Kong, if King Kong got hit by the laser beam once, I can assure you King Kong would not be hit a second time because it is a thinking beast. <laughs> well, watch the trailer. Is he that like Gorilla awesome. Grog? Is he smart? <laughs> not that smart. Not that smart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who are the human uh, actors that are back for this movie? Do oh my know? gosh, yeah. So say so Cody has brought up a scale image, oh. which I don't think is not accurate. This is real quick, this is Godzilla propaganda, you can tell. <laughs> but it shows the size difference between the different depictions of Godzilla and the traditional size of King Kong, which is clearly not the case in the new movie. But all I can take away from this is look at the horrible design from that Matthew Broderick one. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> um, yeah. So that wouldn't be a fight. But what we have here looks to be a little bit more reasonable. Yeah. No I definitive answer. No we'll definitive find out. answer. We'll find out, we'll find out soon. We'll yeah, find what out about soon. the rogues galaxy or, or gallery of, of villains that they fight up against? I know technically Mothra. they're of the same universe, but mm. yeah, like Mothra and all that stuff are traditionally oh, yeah. Godzilla. Fights. Yeah, yeah. King Kong, King Kong has, I think, you know, Godzilla has Mothra, Mecha Godzilla, um, the one with three heads. Danny um, regrets asking this question. <laughs> All these things, but but then I was gonna say King Kong does have Jack Black holding an old timey camera, so there's there is still you know a good villain. I there. forgot about that. <laughs> oh yeah, Kong knows Peter Jackson. Mm-hmm. Hey, true story. That King Kong game they launched for the Xbox 360. Yep, that was the easiest game to uh, unlock all the achievements. Super was quick. It? I yeah, it was I like see, a thousand achievements like this, super fast. Yeah, because yeah. that was one. That was the one that was on both Xbox and Xbox 360, right? Like, didn't they have like the two versions? You could get the HD version, yes, or you could HD get version. the other version. And I played the other version, and I beat the whole damn thing. I even unlocked the bonus level where Kong gets away. Yeah. <laughs> I played the HD version. I was like, no, nah, oh, okay, nah, I want okay. upgrade. I want, I want yeah, HD. Yeah. I yeah. get that. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for tying it back into games, considering <laughs> we could basically spend the next hour talking about uh, King Kong and Godzilla. I want to talk about some of the things that have happened in gaming. The biggest news story that I have seen, Xbox Live's price increase slash price cut. So <laughs> um, basically last Friday... Uh, Microsoft announced a planned price increase for their Xbox Live service. It, it essentially doubled the cost uh, annually in many cases for people. Um, it seemed like a play, in my opinion, to get people to convert their subscription to Game Pass because it it made the prices equal and one includes the other. So it's like, why would you continue paying for that service? Like, But it was a weird financial bullying kind of way of doing it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, there really were also time for that too. yeah yeah mm-hmm. so there were some other things that were going on as well which is that you know PlayStation and Switch when you have a free to play game like um, I guess like Fortnite or something you can just play those you don't since they're open and they're, you don't need anything to access it or whatever you just you don't need PlayStation Plus you don't need any Switch online you don't need those services you can just access those games but Xbox has always required Xbox Live to go online for anything even those things that are supposed to be free um, and interestingly enough it only took by the end of the day for them to reverse that decision. I think people were pretty upset and we can talk into whether or not we think that was justified or not. Um, but with and that whether reversal, or that was planned. whether or not it was planned, that, I guess yeah, you can't do that stuff that quickly. <laughs> Otherwise, right. You, you, I mean, I w- you'd be surprised. There are definitely some times where like some people at a certain man- management level think it's a great idea and like, all the subordinates who are not listened to are just like, there's nothing that you can do or say to convince them it's a terrible idea. And it isn't until it's released and everyone reacts negatively for them to go like, uh, you know, I I will say that someone that I know who's an Xbox community manager, social manager did make a post after the reversal happened and was like, Oh my God, this day. Um, Mm. so Mm. which led me to believe that like, Oh no, he was navigating 
this mm-hmm. the you know for the last 24 hours or whatever mm-hmm. and and they were as they were reversing it yeah um, um well but one interesting thing though is that when they reversed it they also said okay fine you've also pointed out the hypocrisy of us charging you guys for free to play games as well so that's they basically are saying all right we're going to keep xbox live at the original price we had it set at and we're going to also unlock those free to play games or committed to unlocking those free to play games so I just kind of want to like go around the horn and see what you guys thought of this whole thing like what like omar obviously you mentioned that is this a was this a planned thing what was their intention like what are you guys feeling about this well um we we talked about this on a podcast because we recorded uh twice that day mm-hmm. we usually do these uh, emergency <laughs> podcasts just in case like there's like a breaking yeah. news we're like paris yeah. let's get together we, we record right away <laughs> and this to me felt like Xbox 2013, hmm. when uh, Don Matrick was in charge of of the of the division at, during that time, mm-hmm. and it, it was anti consumer. Honestly, like this was more for the new customers um, if they are planning to get an Xbox and joining an Xbox Live, or um, you have to pay one hundred twenty dollars um, once a year, right? Mm-hmm. Not a good idea. If you really want to get new customers, why not have it cheap? Have it a different way for them to get the service, get the console, right? And um, mm-hmm. and not have any for free when you play games like uh, Fortnite, Apex Legends. It, it's a huge mistake because people could just go and buy PlayStation 5 or Nintendo Switch and just play those games there. They don't need Xbox, you know? So, mm-hmm. uh, wow, you have a hat. So, that's pretty cool. <laughs> da- thanks for joining the crew. <laughs> yeah. Such a follower, James. Yeah, for our audio listeners. I found mine. Yeah, yeah sorry. Danny, it was down, James man. has, yes. you know. James. James d- Caving into peer pressure all the, the time. And Fit yes. Envy has his own yellow hat now. Went picked up you look great, though. So. Thanks. You look great, though. <laughs> yeah. No, but I was saying it was cool that uh, a lot of the community members and the media was posting about this, like giving mm-hmm. feedback to Xbox, and they listened. They, they, they were like, yeah, you know what? This is not a good idea. Let's change it. And they went back to uh, the original price. I think that's a, that, that was cool. But... Who thought this was a good idea? Like, I haven't heard that even one person said that it was, this, this was great at all. Like, I mean, this was a, a terrible idea from, from Microsoft. It's, it seems this. like one of those things that you hear about. And I'm not, I'm not in any position of power enough to be in these. We're like, someone's like, all right, we have this service. If we change the interest rate by like 0.02 on everybody that equates to like $1.5 billion extra revenue for us per year, right? But it's just 0.02 for everybody. This mm-hmm. seems like the worst example of that I've ever seen. Or, double it. Yeah, yeah. We're mm-hmm. just going to double it. Or it feels kind of like, you know, if you don't call your internet service provider every like six months to ask them what their prices are for what speeds they are, they will happily let your grandmother pay $500 a month for a dial up modem, you know, mm-hmm. like, like just because, just because she'd never call. And it's this, it's this weird kind of like price bullying that I really hate, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, no, it's crazy I totally how agree. much of that is just the performance of it too. Cause all you have to do is call once and be like, Hey, mm-hmm. I'm going to cancel. And then they give you the price or whatever. It's like, yeah. you, you know, like no one, no, everybody, everybody involved knows that's not mm-hmm. actually the intention of anybody who's calling, mm-hmm. but yeah. you just have to, you have to do the performance. You have to get through that step and then you get, you know, you're not getting fucked by mm-hmm. the provider. Yeah. yeah. I had yeah. the same reaction as Danny where I looked at it and thought this is just like them removing the disc drive from the, you know, the Xbox one. Mm. And you would have thought they would have learned their lesson lesson from making such a drastic change and I also think that there's some there was some telephone in marketing here, you know, a game of telephone that had a disconnect to it because it's like someone said, you know what? There's so many consumers that don't realize that they could get a really good deal with Games Pass if they just you know paid mm-hmm. they paid the hundred and twenty, and rather than just marketing that that you know that this is an, an mm-hmm. option, they went straight to we should just make people have this deal. It's like it's kind of like Lucille Blue thinking a banana costs ten dollars. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. like there's some mm-hmm. someone that doesn't get the value of a dollar in here. Yeah. And I'm I'm good on them for reversing it as quickly as they did, but also kind of shame on them for thinking that that was the right approach to take. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well, two it, things, two, two, two things I want to say about this. One mm-hmm. was they announced this on a Friday. 
it's you a know, no news that, outlet. Exactly. Yeah. So like, mm-hmm. hey, just announce it today, and by the weekend, people are gonna forget, right? Mm-hmm. Not a good idea. Number two, uh, Phil Spencer uh, actually replied to my co-host Paris, uh, the mm-hmm. head of Xbox, replied to Paris on uh, that same day once um, they changed everything, and he was like apologizing that oh. we have a. We made our mistake. It was our bad. So mm-hmm. from that side, it was cool to see Xbox making that change and and saying, "Hey, look, we messed up. Mm-hmm. We totally messed up." So that's that's the positive thing. And it was because us, the the consumers, we were like just speaking out, like this is not a good idea. Yeah, come on, like if you want people to join Xbox Game Pass, show the value of Xbox Game Pass. Show the games that are in there. Mm-hmm. That's a better way to get people to subscribe to the service instead of like, hey. Let's uh, charge Xbox Live for 120 bucks. You know, like that's not mm-hmm. that's not the right way. Don't, that's really don't they do that though? They do that a fair amount. Like they were doing those one dollar sales. Like pay yeah. one dollar and for the rest of the year your gold is upgraded to Game Pass yeah. Ultimate yeah. or whatever. New, I mean, new they were customers doing that shit a lot. New, new, new oh, customers new, though. Oh, oh, new okay. customers. Yeah, yeah. So oh. if you if it's your first time on Game Pass, you could pay like for like a dollar i think you get like okay. three months or something like that for for it but here's the thing you get all the first parties you will discover a lot of cool indies indie games available there mm-hmm. on game pass like just today um there's a, a new game that's uh, similar to um ninja gaiden that just came out i think it's called mm-hmm. cyber shadow mm-hmm. um it is cyber shadow i saw cyber I shadow yeah. that yesterday it's on, it's on game pass you know um mm-hmm. the medium comes out later this week it's going to be on game pass mm-hmm. day one so game pass is is it's so good, man. The value is, it, it, to me, oh, it's yeah. the best. Yeah. It's the best service when it comes to like entertainment. Period. Because there's yeah. so many games, and there's more to come in the future too. Especially once it becomes official with Xbox and Bethesda, we're gonna see a lot of the games from Bethesda available the, there. And you know, so yeah, it's good for sure. Yeah. I, I, like for me, yeah. There's games. Games Pass is what I wanted in a next gen because there have been so many times where I like also the the translatability of it all like i will start a game on my phone mm-hmm. on games pass with like a controller hooked up and then i'll pick it up on my pc and then occasionally i'll be like oh the tv's available and then so then i'll play it on the tv or whatever like like that is just exactly how i want it you pay like one price it's constantly new games coming in cycling and they're good games it's not just like you get access to some bottom of the barrel thing or whatever like they're triple a titles all kinds of things most of it for me is like it remind i was a gamefly subscriber for a really long time and that's how i got to play so much stuff because you know you get yeah. like all kinds of games you get everything every all these things you make a list of the things you want to play and it really felt like a true gamer paradise well, without sounding cheesy um, yeah i feel like we grew up in a different time though right because like when i was coming up there were there were places where you would go rent video games from Oh yeah, yeah. not just like blockbusters or whatever. There were like mom and pop shops that you would Mm -hmm. go rent video games from, and you would—that's how you would cycle through that stuff. You spend five bucks a week, and you'd play a different game every week or whatever. Yeah, and that stopped existing really when, when especially when GameFly went away. But like that stopped existing. That stopped being a thing that you could just pop a couple a couple bucks down and try things out without really committing to Uh, all that. I'll say this though: while all of us here, I think are like total advocates for games pass. I think we are definitely on the further end of the side of like people who want games to be a a certain percentage of their life, you know, like, and so I think it's nice. There are still so many people out there for as many PlayStation fives and Xbox one X's that are selling out everywhere. There's so many people out there. They're like, no, no, why would I don't need, no, why would I need that? Like I'm perfectly fine with my 360 slim or what, you know, like, like, and, and for people like that, I, don't think that just doubling the price is it makes sense like you well, that's too much you're just a you guy know? in a hat mm-hmm. yeah. i'm just a guy yeah, in a exactly. hat. what do i know exactly I'm just a guy in a hat. um yeah. so there is there is like a there's a missing spot there they, they can't just go all right all of a sudden you're the same as this because there there aren't people that are prepared to pay that much you know and, yeah, and i guess that, like oh go ahead Go ahead, my bad. I was going to say, like, I, I, I feel like I'm coming, I, I didn't realize it before, but I must be coming from a pretty, pretty, pretty privileged space, right? Where I hadn't even thought about game, Xbox Live in, mm-hmm. in forever because I've been a Game Pass Ultimate yeah. subscriber since that started, you know, to get the PC version of it and just includes everything. Mm-hmm. Not even, it hasn't even, con- I haven't considered that that was something that people still use. Yeah. Um, I, you know, like, I do think they've done 
they've done a fair amount of good things like getting people in into that ecosystem, right? Getting people into Game Pass as a thing. And mm-hmm. I do think that like really is the the most genuine best value thing you can do in video games right now is Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um so like if you can afford it, you know, like that's that's where you want to be because you get a lot of options. You get stuff on PC, you get stuff, you know, on the consoles and stuff, and you get crossplay and all that all that jazz. Mm-hmm. Um to go back a couple things too, to like when they took the drive out of the thing, I never really saw that as like anti consumer as like this kind of jump was because that felt like they were reaching for a future the future of the way video games work. What? You know? You know, like they were like, okay, we don't need, we don't need physical media. We have like the internet is a thing, you know, we have hard drives, let's reduce waste here and, you know, get it, make it easier for people to get stuff. But yeah, it was a misstep at the time because it was like, they were one generation too early Mm -hmm. to make that leap. Because now you have, you know, you have the PlayStation 5s coming out with digital consoles and stuff too. And it's like, this is how people work. This is how it works now, you know. An option would have been better to have the option yeah. to buy discless I, I i a coastal elite thought it was like a really great advancement but I, yeah. then i i totally th- think that you know if you're living in somewhere more rural and you don't you can't download you don't have those options i was like oh okay i totally we're, totally understand that you know i mean I, we're it's talking, not even well, rural right like we're talking you guys are in la oh, yeah. and you have the worst Our fucking internet in the world <laughs> 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 Well, we're talking about when when they were like, "Oh, you can't share games anymore," right? Like, because you put because there was that that phase where they still had a disc drive, but you basically bought a game, put the disc in, and then it essentially was an unlock for a digital download. Like, and so then that meant that you couldn't take the disc and then hand it to your friend, right? Wasn't that the whole yeah. thing that that's got that these? Was, here's a Sony share. That was kind of how games, Sony right? jabbed at it. Yeah. 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 So like, but even then, like, kind of what both of you are saying, it's like they. Yeah, they clearly had the charts and looked at the player, you know, patterns and went, this is where things are going. But whatever their PR team that they run these things through, you know, maybe they weren't thinking about how gamers truly react, you know? And yeah. and and I think cuz like even this, I completely it's it seems so archaic that Xbox Live is still a thing. When you have another yeah. service yeah. that includes it and then literally everything else like it'd be like if you were paying for netflix except you couldn't watch any movies on it you know like and then there was another netflix that cost a little bit more that had movies on it you know it's like (laughs) a weird a weird it's that's not exactly the same but that's close to the metaphor as i can muster right now and so it's kind of interesting because like yeah you're right like game pass is better in every way and it's probably the best value so I just see a bunch of like marketing people or whatever in a conference room going like, we just can't figure out why everyone isn't signing up for this. It's clearly better. And so they try something and it's like the worst idea you can imagine. You know, Danny, do you think that there's now like a statute of time where Xbox is like, fuck, it's we we can't within the next year, we can't even try to raise the the price of this ten dollars because we Mm -hmm. put a target on ourselves. Yeah, Mm -hmm. no, I, I agree. And you know what I think it is? And this is the reason our theory why i think uh the the price went up for like a couple of hours and then went down i think it's because <laughs> xbox needs a certain amount of subscribers to the service of game pass mm-hmm. right maybe there's a, like a time by a certain month or or a certain date mm. they have to have a certain amount of subscribers there right so so let's let's uh raise the price for the new customers like exa- they're, they're the ones that are probably going to sign up and they'll be like hey let me just sign up to game pass that to me was just like a stupid move for them to get people to sign up, right? Mm-hmm. But I think once Xbox started releasing games like Halo Infinite, Starfield, all these first-party games that's not available on Nintendo Switch or or PlayStation 5, you're going to see more people subscribing to the service. Mm-hmm. And they're, now they're going to see the value of it. But doing it this way was just the, the, the wrong way to get the word out. Talk about yeah. the value. Talk about the content that's in there. Because look... It's like Netflix. Every week there's something new, and I found out word of mouth of mm-hmm. on uh, like on on Twitter of people talking about, oh man, this TV series is pretty cool. This movie is really good, you know. So that's what that's what uh, Xbox needs to start doing once they start getting a lot of games mm-hmm. coming in, even indie games, double A games, triple A games. That's mm-hmm. gonna make a lot of people get excited and sign up to the service. You know, you're not gonna see that type of content anywhere else. So yeah. and they're after. 
they're after the mobile crowd too. There's over like a billion people that have smartphones around the world. Mm-hmm. That's the crowd that they need that can't afford a console, but they have an Android device or an iOS and they could start playing uh, S Cloud through their phones. Mm-hmm. Touch yeah. screen, maybe a, a, maybe have yeah, a Bluetooth shit, controller. X-Cloud. Yeah, and in the f- thing. <laughs> yeah, and in yeah, the future, right. you're going to see Samsung and other smart TVs adding Game Pass in there, Roku. Once they mm-hmm. start doing that, you're going to see more people subscribing. They're going to know about the service, but they don't need Xbox. They don't need Xbox Live. They just need that service, and that's it. You know. But mm-hmm. uh, I yeah. hope I hope that they do a better job in the future communicating because, like you said, at least 2013. It was a terrible messaging promoting Xbox One, and that's why that's why Sony got the crowd all excited at the press conference because, mm-hmm. like, hey, you could share games and all this. Because I remember, I remember <laughs> interviewing um, I can't remember who it was from from Xbox. Uh, was it Aaron Greenberg? I can't remember. But he says he him and other people were like, well, if we asked them, okay, so you're in like in the middle. Uh, let's say you're you're in the Navy, and you're like in the middle of the ocean or something, mm-hmm. uh, and you have an Xbox One console and there's no internet. How yeah. can you play those games? Well, he says something like, "Well, you could get a, you, you could get an Xbox, uh, an Xbox 360 if you want to play yeah. those games." Like yeah. that was the messaging, not only from it, but a lot of other people from the team. Yeah, you know, yeah. and that that was just bad messaging. And then of course they they changed and made things better. But th- yeah. I, I felt I felt like Friday. It reminded me of that of Xbox 2013 bad yeah. messaging you know i get that yeah and i and now i think it's like now they have this statute of time now where it's like well even if they wanted to raise it ten dollars and mm-hmm. see some margin there they can't do that yeah <laughs> because mm-hmm. they've just they've shaken the trust of the consumer yeah, yeah. yeah. so now they again back to the drawing board have to mm-hmm. put in the time to to reestablish that and it's it's a, it's a shame because i think you know obviously i don't know their financials nor do i presume to think that i am someone smart enough to understand what would be profitable for them mm-hmm. but you know there's a there's a version in my mind where they could have raised that service by 10 or 15 dollars and said hey we're raising this but we're going to give you 3 months of games pass for free oh yeah and then you know what yeah. and then yeah. someone and then people might have been abated a little bit by that and then might have mm-hmm. later said you know what i i really liked having this games pass i'm gonna up to yeah. that and but they kind of just just went for it yeah yeah right. it's it's a similar strategy to you see the like disney plus and stuff where they're putting out movies like when was it uh it wasn't a lot of mulan was, the, was, was 30 mulan? Yeah. Yeah. Mulan came out and was like, you need to be a, a member of the service, but you also are going to pay for this movie. And it was mm-hmm. like the first time people were like, can we convince people to sign up for our service mm-hmm. in order to be able to pay for this movie? Yeah. And that's kind of like, it. you know, it's a similar, probably a similar mindset that you have to be in for this games, Game Pass stuff. Mm-hmm. Is there data out there that says yeah. Game Pass is like not failing or not well? performing? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, I, they, what, would they the, yeah, what would be the they driving factor? Be, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they did? Okay. Yeah, I mean, la- like, last, yeah, what, what last, would, year, uh, last year. What would cause them to do this? Like, what would be the thing that'd be like, oh, shit, we're, we're really tanking right now or whatever. We need to raise some more capital or whatever. Like, what would yeah. be the... I think I think it's not that it's tanking. I think this move, to to me, as from the outside, it looked like there was like a desperate move. Like, oh, we got to get more people to sign up. Mm-hmm. You know, so... Um, I know they're not tanking because uh, I, yeah. I last year they announced how many subscribers. I think it was like 15 million or something like that. Um, and they're probably going to announce the numbers again later this year, like how many mm-hmm. people already subscribed. Because look, when Gears 5 came out, I was in New York City. I would go to like Times Square, just walk around. There was a billboard right in the middle of Times Square of Gears of War, Ge- Gears 5. And it said Xbox Game Pass. It wasn't in stores. It mm-hmm. was just promoting the service. Mm-hmm. So if they start doing that, because look, the 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 mainstream audience they don't know much about Game Pass. It's us the the hardcore the hardcore consumers that we know about this, right? So we're the mm-hmm. ones that are just spreading the word to everybody else. So yeah. I think um, they have the budget. There's even execs they're actually getting bonuses based on how many people are subscribed to the service too. So they're really pushing it. It just yeah. was just the wrong way how they were doing it last week. Uh, mm-hmm. Cody, Cody, our director is saying 10 million in April of 2020 is the statistic he found. But mm-hmm. the, I think I completely agree. This sounds like this sounds like projections. If anyone's worked in a corporate structure, they've heard the term projections before, and that's mm-hmm. when someone in January tries to guess 
what things are going to be like in November. And then they make a line graph that shows that. And ultimately, that line graph is always wrong. Either it's way under or it's way above. And then and if it's ever under, there is always a conversation of how do we immediately rip it back up so that way it is the projections are correct because they've already made promises to investors and all kinds of things and they have calls and they have meetings and stuff everything comes back to the corporate flow of stuff so that's mm-hmm. that's what i think too is i think that they were looking at the chart uh Co- cody just updated and said at as of november 2020 it looks like it's like 15 yeah so, that, you know, see, i was right okay yeah <laughs> i was so like wait maybe, i could have sort of 15 <laughs> that's, yeah that's according that's according to the verge and so like mm-hmm. you know i think that you get those numbers and maybe it's not the growth that they expected or promised. And even though those those numbers seem really big to me, um, mm. you know, they're just not seeing people playing or maybe they're all playing one game or something like that. You know, they want mm. more people. In the, you know, they always want more. Uh, well, everybody I have, I have, if you're not if you're not growing, you're dying. Right. Like, that's yeah, how the mentality of. of all that stuff goes. Yeah. I have one more thing to say about about uh, why Xbox Game Pass is important. Mm-hmm. Um, there was an interview with um, Ryan McCaffrey from IGN. He was interviewing uh, a Tim, uh, a Tim Schafer about uh, Psychonauts. Go and on. They're, and they're taking <laughs> Psychonauts too, and they're mm-hmm. taking their time with the game. You know, they want this game to to be good. But the positive thing is, studios are not going to be. Uh, they're gonna. They're not gonna feel pressure like, oh man, we need to make it this way because the sales numbers and the retail. Mm-hmm. And that. now it's like with Game Pass, they have the freedom to do whatever they want because people are going to play because it's part of the service. Mm-hmm. It's like grounded. Nobody knew that game was gonna be oh, yeah. a, a, a hit. You know, last, mm-hmm. when it came out last year, right? And mm-hmm. we're going to see more of those type of games, like just. Exp- as an experiment, some of them are going to be good, some of them are not. Mm-hmm. But that that's the beauty part of a Game Pass. And another thing too, I discovered so many indie games that I was just curious, like, yep. hey, this this looks like a pretty cool game. Mm-hmm. Let me just try it out, and you yeah. do, you would discover more games like that, man. You know, so absolutely, it's good. I, I there's literally a button on Game Pass, and this is not an ad for Game Pass, but like that just goes like, what are you in the mood? You press a button, and it's just like a roulette wheel, and it'll here's a game, and it's like. Then you can play it, <laughs> like, and then you yeah. can play it. Um, well, we I want to move on real quick, but first I want to uh, hear a couple words from a few of our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by American Giant. Listen, clothes should be made to last. People do not spend enough time thinking about things that they can add to their wardrobe that are going to last longer than you will, okay? You're going to get cheap stuff. It's going to wear out. You're going to have to replace that cheap stuff, and you're going to wish that you had just gotten the good stuff from the beginning, and that's where American Giant comes in. It's clothes that match your value. Uh, American Giant is ethical, sustainable, and it's local. Um, They've built a unique and robust American supply chain with deep relationships to their factories, their workers, and the communities in which they make their clothes. You know what? Be honest with you, it's not the cheapest way to make apparel, but they believe it's the better way, and I'm inclined to agree. They stay local, they make high-quality clothes in the market and facilities that are the world leaders in environmental and human rights protections. These are all things that really matter to me and the companies that I work with, but the best thing is I feel so comfortable endorsing the product. I was able to get my hands on some American Giant clothes. I got uh, I got some shirts, I got some hoodies. I got, honestly, I loaded up on socks, and I'm not sure I can other socks now because they are so comfortable and they're so good and I'm going to put them through their paces and make sure and get back to you and make sure that they can last because I do a lot of walking um, but no I basically got a package of clothes and I got some I got a t-shirt and some thermal shirts and it's been pretty cold here so I immediately threw that thermal on and I just wore it through the whole weekend okay three days I had that thing on didn't stink felt good quality kept up felt great I really loved it it's not cheap and disposable it's really comfortable things, and it's 100% USA-based. Um, I really appreciate the relationship and the uh, time they put into making their product and where they make it and how they make it. Um, American Giant wants to make clothes that's durable, not disposable. They want to reclaim the American tradition of high-quality clothes that last. Um, more and more, kept longer, built to last. Uh, they're not made to end up in a landfill. And I assure you, my clothes will not end up in a landfill. They're going to be great. They're going to outlive me. Um, so if 
you want to get 15% off your first order, use promo code DUDE at American-Giant.com. That's 15% off when you use code D-U-D-E at American-Giant.com. I love the clothes I got. You're going to love the clothes you get, and you're going to appreciate it yourself for doing it. This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. I'm going to pose a little metaphor for you, an allegory, if you will. When you use the bathroom, you always close the door behind you, right? You don't want a random passerby looking in. I don't know who's random in my home. But I mean, even people you do know, maybe you don't want them looking in on or using the bathroom. Um, so why would you let people look in on you when you go online? Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like going to the bathroom and not closing the door. It's rude, number one, but it's also it's also just not safe or sanitary. So, um, but... I don't know if you realize this, your internet service provider, whether it's Comcast or Verizon or whatever, they probably know every single website you visit. Um, and what's worse is that they can actually sell all that information to ad companies and tech giants who's going to use your data and they're going to target you with products and stuff like that. It sounds cool, except your data is your property and someone else shouldn't be able to profit off of it. ExpressVPN puts a stop to all this. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your devices and the internet, so that way your online activity cannot be seen by anyone, but I guess you. Um, ExpressVPN, I have it on all of my devices. It works on everything, phones, laptops, routers. Um, everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can still be protected, even if they don't have ExpressVPN, if you do use it on a router, so that's kind of a cool feature there. Um, the best thing about it is that ExpressVPN is as easy as closing the bathroom door. You just hit a button, boom, if it's on your phone or if it's on your browser or whatever, you hit one click and then you are immediately protected. Uh, Exp ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN by CNET, Wired, The Verge, and countless others. So if you're like me and you believe your online activity is your business, secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash dude today. Um, you can use the exclusive link expressvpn.com slash dude, and you can get an extra three months free. That's expressvpn.com slash dude. And we're back. That was, I knew that was going to be a big discussion. I feel like there's a lot to be said about that, and I'm sure we could do the whole podcast on it, but I do have some other stories to promise to ensure that everyone gets the game cast <laughs> podcast that they truly desire. Um, Gamecast is not ours. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> All right. Um, uh, is anyone playing Hitman three? I have. I've have been you, playing it. I've been playing it out for like two plus weeks now. And yeah. and you, the first level, the Dubai level. How did you do? Did you feel? When you play it, you feel confident? How long did let it me, take you? Let me tell you, I'm terrible in Hitman 3, man. I tried my best to, <laughs> to play mm -hmm. that game. I'm, I'm terrible at it. So, But here's a good thing. Here's a positive thing. Every time I play the game, I discover new, uh, uh, new missions. I discover new mm -hmm. things to do. And I'm like, oh, man. But then, I don't know. I'm one of those, like, I don't have the patience to keep everything like quiet on the low. I, I just like to go and attack. That's me. Well, I don't like to take well, my time. <laughs> Danny, what if I told you you don't need patience to play Hitman no. 3 because speedrunners have already set world records in the game. First level, Dubai. <laughs> wow. The world record is currently nine seconds. What? what? Speedrunner <laughs> Reek impossible? finished. This is according to PC Gamer. Speedrunner Reek finished the level in nine seconds on January 22nd. And then Der Launch Linus uh, also managed to achieve the same time on the 23rd. So it, we actually have we have the video there. Cody, can you play back the video of this? Is So this is I guess it opens right there. OK, so let's see. Restarting. Re restarting. OK. Yeah. Coming in from the stairs, interestingly enough. And then... <laughs> what? <laughs> and then... Out. <laughs> nine seconds. First nine level seconds. in nine seconds. Well, yo. How demoralizing <laughs> must Incredible. that be for the developers? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, insane. <sighs> that, I mean, Do you think it is demoralizing, though? Like, I feel yeah. like they would be like... They would probably love that people figured out that like some dumb shit thing like that to do. The one place, it, well, this makes me think of those movies, like a Christopher Nolan movie, where like this is the only point where these two things happen in the same time or whatever. Like we watched, uh, 
we watched Endgame recently, and they were like, there is one point where three stones were in New York all at the same time, and then, so they have to go back there. This is what this feels like, but in Hitman. Nine seconds, that's <laughs> that impressive. That is bananas, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that is it's bananas so funny. that somebody, that people figure that out. It doesn't even seem like, that's not even like crazy gamer skill or some weird no, hacky no. thing to get the game done. That was just like, they just happened to be like, oh, if you look up, you can see both of the yeah. targets. And that's why I feel like they would be demoralizing because you're a developer, you build this exquisite level, all this design, <laughs> these intricacies that someone has to navigate, and then someone just realizes, like, oh, I can just look up and exploit the architecture, and boom, <laughs> boom. And, like, I would be like, because I don't know if they even thought that that's a, like, like you see that as adult, you go, you, ah, Yeah, so, you can't. You, you know, can't have anticipated I get, that. In Hitman 3's defense, kind of like Danny said, every single mm. time you beat it, kind of it like opens up a new way to try it so Mm -hmm. so that way that they're doing there is like already not the primary entry point like the campaign entry point is like you're coming you're scaling the outside of the building and it gives you a little tutorial and then you change your shirt you look really cool and then you come in um Mm -hmm. so that's like the version that unlocks after you've already beaten it once and and generally with all those levels you're like oh no this i want to try it again but i want to come in with the laundry So you're right. They probably did look at this and go like, ooh, we missed that one. Like, we for sure (laughs) missed that one. But there's so many other ways to play the game that I I, I feel like it's not a, oh, it's broken. Now this is the only way anyone's ever going to do this level. And all that work we put into it is pointless. I think it's just like a, oh, well, that'll be a funny thing for people to people to do yeah. during speed run but they're not going to like patch out the 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 dude standing in, I, the, in that yeah. doorway or something i hope not i hope not because they do think it yeah. is a funny like result and the game's so ridiculous like you can walk into the game wearing a clown costume and everyone's like welcome you know welcome so, <laughs> i just thought that was amazing and i honestly i hadn't seen it i saw the news story about hitman in nine seconds and so i wanted to see it for the first time with you guys wow that, that's impressive <laughs> not gonna lie yeah that's awesome yeah, yeah. um but yeah, I don't know. So Danny, you're enjoying Hitman? Yeah, Hitman is good. I I just got the Nintendo Switch version because I want to try it out. Uh, that one oh, cool. is uh, oh. it's like it's a cloud version in there. You don't have to download anything. So yeah, I'm gonna try really? it out for the first time later on. Wow, yeah. Yeah. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah, what does that mean really cool. actually? So, what it, so you're streaming? So it's like X Cloud. You're streaming the game. Huh. Huh. But I recently had to delete some yeah, games on, the on Switch. my Switch. Yeah, I had no idea, but that yeah. sounds really cool. Well, I mean, yeah. we've been we've been doing a series for Hitman that we're going to be putting up on Funhouse, um, and uh, this is the announcement. I guess yeah, <laughs> formal announcement. Exclusive. Um, we've been doing a series. <laughs> we're going to play through the whole campaign, but uh, the it is a funny thing where we're just doing single player campaign no whatever but sometimes it'll go it'll freeze and it'll go connecting to network and it's like for what <laughs> for <laughs> what like i am literally just dumping a guard's body in a trunk like what are you connecting to the network to find um but yeah so yeah but i'm excited to see what's next for the studio because they're working on um the new uh james, james bond game oh yeah dude that yeah, announcement yeah. is really cool i yeah, hope that, I that turns wait. into something wait. cool man like yeah. give it what a what me. a good pedigree of a of a company to be putting together the next mm-hmm. james bond game mm-hmm. at least yep. i think yeah. i think we're probably going to dig into that a little bit more well, next week we right? will actually be talking about that i unless something wild happens on yeah. funhouse podcast Which next almost week almost certainly will but <laughs> february 2nd <laughs> We'll be recording that. Um, yeah, because because they're doing a, a they're not drawing inspiration from any bonds that we've seen. They're doing a mm-hmm. unique bond, they've said. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I'm really curious what that looks like and, yeah. and how when you have so much bias as to what James Bond is, how you create a unique new bond. I have so many things that I want to say on it, but I will say nothing in case you want me to be on next. <laughs> I was going to have you on it. Yeah. OK, great. That's really um, fun. Also, we have a couple other things that I wanted to mention. We're f- I got to flying through this episode. This one might go just a smidge long. Um, sorry, listeners. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, so, you know, we we're talking about being really good at games. And I also found another news story uh, about a pro gamer who is retiring, age 25, due to a thumb injury. Um, so NBC <laughs> News was reporting on Tommy Zuma. Paparato, uh, who is a Call of Duty player, stepping away from competitive due to wrist and thumb injury. Um, and it actually, I mean, it actually really sucks. Um, yeah. 
you know, he had to, he had to basically, he posted online on Twitter and was like, you know, like I just, it's too painful. It hurts to play. And I, and, and I combined with that, like to play at the competitive level that I want to be playing, Mm -hmm. I, I would never be able to heal essentially. And I don't want to do that. And it really sucks because, you know, this is kind of my livelihood. Um, but it's just, I have to imagine his hand hurts when he's doing other things in life. You know, probably yeah, no joke. For like, sure. Yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll fuck you up. Yeah. We'll fuck up everything, your ability to do anything, because your you know, your mm-hmm. hands like are essential mm-hmm. tools to yeah. everyday yeah. life, you know? Like yeah, yeah I can't imagine. It, it really sucks, but you don't think about esports athletes like you know I think of them as athletes, but like yes. a lot yeah. of people don't think of them that way, mm-hmm. but they're still doing something physical. That's demanding again on their body. and again with a, yeah with a level of precision and skill that is the same as almost any other sport and and there's another thing too it's like you know we've we've had discussions previously in the past here about uh, esports athletes having especially short careers and a lot of that is just you just age out like you just age out there's just almost no way for a 35 year old man to be able to play with the same intensity as like an 18 year old guy um yeah. and so that happens but it's it's even weirder to think about the fact that like an injury might push you out and is this is this the first time we've seen this kind of story where like a like a an on like a athletic injury like mm-hmm. an on field injury sidelined somebody early early ish in their career I mean, if it's the first time I've seen it, and that's kind of like why I wanted to. It can't bring be the first time it's, it's ever happened, but it's like, is this no, the first yeah. time it's been like a public story? I think so. For, for yeah, you say it, it was NBC, right? That's where you got it from. This is NBC, I mean, NBCnews.com. So yeah, yeah, I mean, this that that's Crazy. that's a mainstream press right there, man. Like I've mm, never yeah. seen that from that. Yeah. So yeah, it's for, I think it's the first time. You have to wonder like what the next career step is here because it's like, you know, you hear all these horror stories about athletes. NBA, NFL, that mm-hmm. they destroyed their bodies, but then the career path ends. Maybe if you're really lucky, you can get into coaching or you can get into some coaching, kind of commentating yeah. role. Mm-hmm, but like mm-hmm. those are rare. And so it's yeah. kind of like, what's the option for all these these players? You know? Yeah. Especially yeah, that's as like, like the, the college athlete story, right? Like, you know, make sure that mm-hmm. you don't depend your whole life on this thing because like you get one knee injury and then you're done. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it, you know, as, because esports is like really kind of taking off it feels like it has been for a while but like as these leagues and things are building up like should they be really held accountable for the same thing as you might see not that not that other athletic organizations do an amazing job taking care of their players but you know the intention is to do so like yeah just because it's esports i don't think that they should get a pass from creating pension plans like things you know totally uh, career development th- things like, like different like, things that help yeah someone think about what their life is going to be once this is over you know yeah what's the uh what's like the new what's like the helmet and pads rule that football put in like you have to have certain levels of protection what's mm-hmm. that for esports like yeah, what can you know. do to protect these guys from this rsi kind of thing you know, because yeah. do you give them all like wrist supports or something? Is everybody like hanging their arms and doing weird shit like that? Like, I don't understand. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can't conceptualize what the thing would be to help protect these people. I, I mean, I just think more like things like, you know, if you're going to take someone and you're going to take what is for most people, their formative years, right? Like mm-hmm. their teens into their 20s. These are the these are the parts where most western society has established you are going to learn your skills and learn your trades and like start out on your path for the rest of your life if you're going to take that and put it to this yeah if you if you're going to take that and then you're going to take that time period and it's going to be devoted to something that's going to be over when they're 26 like i think there's an obligation from profiting off of those people to set up something that like allows them to not just feel like they get kicked to the curb once it's over, you know, like, so I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's an, it's interesting side of things. Um, that being said, that being said, not all gamers are young. Some gamers are in fact quite old. I saw this video. (laughs) So the flip side of the argument for this one is the gamer dad. 
Have you guys seen Gamer Dad? I did see this. <laughs> okay. No, 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 this is this is it. Gamer Dad. This is so this did is Did you a see tweet. it, Danny? No, I seen a clip of it. Okay. But but okay. it was like on mute, so I don't know exactly. We're, what we'll, we'll, we'll we'll put it up here, but it's it's a right. tweet from Biggest Sonic fan, which you know, great username. Great username. It said, my dad plays Overwatch like this. He jerks around, dodges, and peeking around corners. He lifts his mouse a lot, loses his breath, but top I four, he this. says. So this is this is uh, Biggest Sonic this. fan's dad um, playing as Lucio in Overwatch and just really going to town, <laughs> going to town with the seat. Amazing. This, this is, is amazing. Which, <laughs> this which, is like way, Universal Lucio Studios. Is Universal kind of Studios, right? Oh, what did you say, You're Danny? zipping on walls and stuff. You got kind of like cut off oh no this is like a universal studios ride you know like hey <laughs> yeah. around everywhere you know so oh man, this is cool this is awesome and he yeah. and he's a top four. Oh, this is awesome and top <laughs> four which i don't know if he means on his team because that just means what he's not bottom two but, I, I, uh, <laughs> hope, I really hope that one of the gaming chair companies reaches out racer or somebody reaches mm-hmm. out to this man and sends him a, a chair because i think <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he needs out of a, and a yellow hat <laughs> oh there you like, go uh, oh he's perfect I, audio yes. listeners, Cody is again. He's putting a yellow hat on the gamer, gamer old man. He's a gamer. Um, he's gamer joining dad. us. He is. He's like reload canceling using melee. Too. This guy's legit. I don't know. He must be. Can he at least record platinum a funhouse video? Like, can we Maybe. get him? Uh, can we? I'd love sure. to have him on if he's available. This is better than VR. There you go. <laughs> That's a better. Could you imagine right there. what you see those videos of people who like like do VR and then they smash their tv or whatever because yes. they're so into it or they just or like, they fall. fall they like yeah oh now let's fly and they just fall forward he would yep. be completely people, immersed in vr people make fun of me because i play games with my whole body yeah <laughs> but they're not they're, they're, they're like point and click games <laughs> like, <laughs> well you always you always say the thing where like if your parents played they'd like play a racing game and they turn the controller and i'm like why do you do I mean, that it's parents, not like i do that <laughs> yeah. do you do that okay well I never, under- I never understood that because I was wheel. like, it's not like you're used to playing with a racing wheel, Dad. Come on. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, I, I just thought that I was I find really myself funny. all the time, like, like leaning over or doing shit I, like this all the time. Like, uh, just unconsciously. Like, mm-hmm. that's just I do what a lot. I do. You're like, immersed. My whole you're body immersed. sometimes hurts. Like, we're talking about these, these young players hurt. Mm-hmm. My, sometimes my whole body hurts when I'm playing games because I'm so tense. Well, because I'm so bad. Yeah, you you also have a hand injury, which you know several times you'll be like, I have to stop playing after 90 minutes because it just can't. Yeah, I, I was thinking a lot about that with these these th- this story specifically because he's 25 and like when mm-hmm. I had surgery on my hand for an injury, my surgeon was like, you're probably gonna. I was 20 was 2010, so I was 26, 25. Mm-hmm. And uh, no, I don't know. And oh, no. no one's <laughs> gonna call you. Math on it. Live. <laughs> and then, okay. um, 35. Mm-hmm. I'm 35. Okay, let's do this all together. So 35, so 11 years ago, so it's 24. Um, and my surgeon was like, Yeah, you're probably gonna need arthritis surgery by the time you're 40. Cool, so, like, thanks. a lot of these players, too, they, they might not have the immediate issues, but then mm-hmm. they might five years after they stop playing go, Oh shit. Yeah, my you know mm-hmm. my hand is is causing me pain every day and and yeah. then how do you account for that because do they go back to the organization they were playing for and say hey i'm having issues now mm-hmm. um i hope we're all on the same level as gamer dad yeah. someday because we, yeah, yeah. we are the generation that will be you know we're on the cusp of being yeah. uh, everyone you know, mm-hmm. it's gonna, it's getting I'm, into. I'm two thirds of the way there. I, I'm I'm old and I still play Overwatch. So, <laughs> <laughs> do you move um, around too with your chair? Yeah, my chair doesn't. I guess it doesn't move around that much. <laughs> I don't know that that would. I was trying to do. Um, what was I playing? I was playing Flight Simulator, and I have a yoke and stuff. But on the chair on our floor, I would be like trying to use the pedals. Mm-hmm. And then I'd be like, all right, here we go. We're ruddering left. And I'd like push myself away <laughs> from like the desk. So like I, I need something that that can roll around, but then also locks down too. Um, so it's, I don't, know, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, but uh, we are almost out of time. We have completely demolished through some of these topics. Um, I just want to real quick ask... Uh, ask you guys what you're playing 
after a word from a couple sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Scouts Honor. As pet parents, working from home has given us more time to spend with our four-legged family members. And uh, it's a great thing, but now it means we're also more aware of their daily needs, their health issues, and their well-being. So if you've noticed that your pet is itchy or smells less than pleasant, uh, you have to check out Scouts Honor. Scouts Honor is my go-to pet brand for grooming products that help with itch relief, odor control, and an overall healthier skin and coat. I love my doggy. okay? Means the world to me. Okay, I check on my dog several times a day, even though we work from home, and I want my dog to be as comfortable as he absolutely can be, because I love him, and I want him to have a beautiful coat, and I want people to I want to take him out of the street. I want people to say, that's a beautiful dog that doesn't itch at all. Scout's Honor is the way to do that. Scout's Honor has probiotic grooming products that are scientifically proven natural solution for treating your pet's skin problems. When applied to the skin, probiotics support healthy bacteria and fight against bad bacteria that cause irritation. They have a ton of amazing different fragrances. Uh, my personal favorite is Dog of the Woods um, because I like to think it makes my dog seem a little bit more rugged and masculine than he actually is. Um, with Scout's Honor, your pet will never look, feel, or smell better. Check out all of Scout's Honor's award-winning products today, available online or wherever pet supplies are sold. But if you want to receive 20% off your first order, go to scoutshonor.com dude. Remember, that's Scout's with a K. So scoutshonor.com dude for 20% off your order, Scout's Honor, natural and preventative grooming solutions for your sweet baby pets. And I love all your, I just want to say real quick before we end this ad read, I love all your pets and I want them to be happy and healthy. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Listen, in this day and age, it just makes sense to have a website. Uh, whether or not that website promotes you as an individual or maybe a business that you're working on or it's just a creative endeavor to just kind of get that creative outlet, it makes sense to have a place on the internet that you can call your own. And if you're gonna make that place, you wanna make sure that you're making home with the best tools possible. That's why I'm here to recommend Squarespace. From online websites to stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Um, the Squarespace system is just fantastic. I have used Squarespace in the past. It for someone who has made websites before Squarespace, it blew my mind how easy it was to make something, to drop in images, to resize, to restructure, to put in text, to put in links, all kinds of things together using Squarespace. It's so intuitive. It makes it super easy. Squarespace also has member areas. You can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. You can manage your members, send email com communications and leverage audience insights all in one easy to use platform. Um, also, they have video blocks. So, you know, whether or not you have a YouTube channel that you want to be able to showcase on your website, you can present those videos, um, YouTube, Vimeo, Animoto, all on your site. Uh, you add an image overlay. So if you want a really nice, cool thumbnail, when someone clicks on it, it feels real clean. It's going to be super easy to do things that I can't even imagine what the code looks like behind the scenes. Like, you basically, it basically turns you into the Neo of making websites, even though you don't know what you're doing. Um, say you have multiple contributors, you can give them selective access to your site's website manager, it depends on their permissions or whatever you wanna set for them, so you're working like a team. Um, also, of course, you're gonna get create analytics on your traffic. You can see how your visits, unique visitors, and page views trend over time, gain insight into the top traffic sources, products and device types, browsers and operating systems. You're gonna know everything there is to know about your website. You're gonna be able to build your audience. You're gonna be able to grow your brand. You're gonna be able to have a successful business in the best way possible. And the best thing is that we want to send you to squarespace.com so that way you can get a free trial when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash dude soup, and you're going to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So that's a really great deal. It's going to save you money on hopefully something that makes you money. Squarespace.com slash dude soup to save 10% off. You got to get a website and there's no easier way to do it than Squarespace. And we are back, kind of coming to the end of the show. We've talked about games. We've talked about other people's games. I want to talk about your guys' games. What are you guys playing? Well, for me, I've been playing a lot of Tetris Effect Connected. 
because I just I'm a huge fan of Tetris since the original, scream. one of the mm-hmm. best soundtracks ever. Uh, and in also, VR or is it Tetris no, Effect ju- is in VR, right? Yes, yes, but I'm play. I, I can't play VR games. I'll I'll get nauseous. But uh, <laughs> is, is that on Xbox Game Pass? Yes, on Game Pass. But That's how the, I got the it. difference, yeah, the difference between that one and the PlayStation version is they added this new mode called Connected, where is th- uh, they have a multiplayer. Uh, oh. feature there too it's not available in the original game so you could play the uh, uh, zone battle connected is three versus one and there's multiple bosses so we're like in the last boss and we just can't we can't beat it so it's oh been like God. it's been almost like can't even weeks what a boss <laughs> almost a, a month game would be. <laughs> yeah yeah so i've been playing that uh, i'm also playing a lot of apex with my girlfriend rihanna because we're getting ready for season eight it's coming out what, next season eight? week what are you guys playing on xbox and she's playing on playstation Okay. Yeah, yeah, and I'm. I want to try out the Switch version. Supposedly, it might be coming out very, very soon too. I, so. I see. I see you both posting about it, and of all the battle royales, Apex was the only one that I was like, I really like this one. But you know, yeah. I'm not the kind of person who's going to boot up a game that's going to like beat me in the ass and play alone. Um, mm-hmm. But does it? Can you play? If I'm on PC, can I play with you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Possible? It's cross. It has cross play. Yeah. So we that's we've been doing crazy. this. We've been, uh, everybody that joined our team, we play like mm-hmm. different versions. We do that on purpose. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. we'll sign up and maybe we'll get more players that's not Xbox or not PlayStation, mm-hmm. maybe PC. So yeah, yeah. And that, that's another thing too. I want to I try the Nintendo Switch version. So when that comes out, we'll mm-hmm. play uh, crossplay too. So yeah, if that's you want to awesome. join whenever you want. Yeah, man, I, want, I want yeah. it. The problem is it's only three, right? Yes, yeah, only three. Because I, yeah. I want to play. I wish there was. A, I wish it was four, so then it could be uh, you, me, Rihanna, and Yami too. Because I know yeah, she's yeah. playing with you guys. Yes, 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 yes. She's pretty good. She's got. Yeah. She actually just started playing with us. And she's like, oh my god, just, we've gotten a lot of wins. It was one night we got like six wins straight. I was like, oh, snap. I gotta play with you. Now I'm definitely yeah, yeah. down. Yeah, yeah guys, let me know. When, when Reggie and Phil Spencer and was it Shu stood on that stage together, like they meant business. They were like, we're unifying. Yes. yes. No more mm-hmm. boundaries. No more yeah. Yeah. Uh, bear. Oh, we're raising the price of uh, Xbox Live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 120 well, bucks. When, everyone, when everyone's <laughs> rich. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's the, uh, you know, what is it? A high tide raises all boats or yeah. something. Yeah. Rising tide mm-hmm. raises all boats, except the boats are all giant corporations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and the rest of us are in rafts. Um, but uh, but yeah, so it's everyone's decided. Oh, there's tons of money for all of us to go around. Yeah. Um, so so that's yeah. that's uh those are the games I'm playing. Also a little bit of Hitman, and there's one more game that I can't talk about, but I'm playing okay. that too. And that's mm-hmm. cool, mm-hmm. awesome. Um, Elise, what are you up to? Uh, this weekend I finished um the last campfire, which is the Hello Games, uh, game, which you know coming off of. Uh, no Man's Sky is is I didn't even know they put out all. another game. Crazy. It's wonderful. It's mm-hmm. I ten out of ten for me. Can't recommend it enough. Damn. It's very much in my wheelhouse, which is a very a beautiful game with a very uh, poignant, profound story and and also um, the gr- great puzzles. I love the mm-hmm. puzzling a lot. Um, you solve all, you saw you solve all the puzzles yourself. <laughs> Sometimes I needed a different eye. I was oh, too see, deep see. in the puzzle, see, and I yeah, needed yeah. a fresh perspective. We've all but been then, ultimately, there. I would come out victorious. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Um, you know, there's an odd time. Uh, mm-hmm. I will admit that. But mm-hmm. uh, it, it was like a beautiful game, and I and I think like I don't know if you're if you find yourself like in a funk and you need like a little something uplifting. It's a great game for that too. It's it's you play as this little little character called the Ember. And you're basically, you know, doing a lot of traversing, which happens a lot in indie games. <laughs> doing a lot of traversing, and you're trying to find these forlorn individuals who, you know, when you achieve, the, you, when you finish these puzzles, you bring back the light to them and help them. But then there's also, you know, there's a lot of profound messaging in it where you might encounter a forlorn that isn't ready to be helped, or mm. they are too scared, and or mm-hmm. that you try as you might help, you can't. Like it's it's the the themes and messaging are super strong so you might mm-hmm. if you feel, you'll feel a little bit um mm-hmm. but i lo- i loved it and uh the game i'm looking forward to that uh is this week is the medium from uh bloober team which mm-hmm. uh fur boy layers of fear mm-hmm. that's it's it's a new game from them so and also mm-hmm. like it's a couple weeks out but little nightmares too 
Mm. Pretty mm. looking forward to that. You, you know what? You should medium gameplay definitely... on the stream on Friday. Yeah. Go oh. check it out. Excited for that. You have to minutes. also uh, play in the future uh, Scorn. Okay, that's a scary Scorn. one too. Scorn. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Scorn. Let me write that yeah. down. Scorn. Oh, also, gotcha. Nerds. I can't get enough of that Nerds multiplayer nerds. solitaire. Places in the Nerds <laughs> deep type. Omar, what are you up to? Um, before I start, might I say, uh, Danny, have you checked out Puyo Puyo Tetris yet? Oh, for, yeah. For yes, Tetris Battler and stuff? I have a love and hate relationship with that game. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the second <laughs> one of those just came out. Puyo Puyo Puyo, Puyo too. So that's, yeah. uh, that's pretty rad. But uh, for me, I've been playing uh, things on my PS5 because I, I spend a shitload of money on this console and I feel mm-hmm. like a real need to use it. But also, mm-hmm. like, it's shit looks amazing. PS5 games mm-hmm. look amazing on my like on my TV and stuff. So mm-hmm. I'm enjoying that. I uh, I slogged my way through Cyberpunk, made sure to finish that, even yeah. though it was like a pretty terrible experience, honestly, playing it on PlayStation mm. 5. That sucks. It was crashing like literally every 30 minutes that game would crash for me. It's I it's I don't know. I didn't like it enough to have spent all that time, but whatever, I finished it. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. but the thing I've been playing <laughs> the most right now is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Oh wow. It's not a okay. new game by any way, but like I had never really done Assassin's Creed games before this, but this is really fun. I'm really yeah. digging this game, and I'm mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm deep in it. I'm playing like I've I think I've put uh, my save just crossed over fifty hours of wow. Oh my playing God. That's awesome. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's really good. That's yeah, great. so like I've been playing the shit out of that, and the story's cool. Like the I hear fifty. Are cool. That's when it opens up. Say that again. <laughs> I just speak stupid. I just said I, I hear at fifty. That's when it opens up. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, I mean, there's no Final joke. It, it really is because like there's a there's a bunch of like areas of the map I still am not leveled enough wow. to go to. Like there's a lot cool. of shit still to come to come in that oh, game. Oh damn. That's and cool. I've been playing that. Yeah, I've been playing it a lot. It's really it's really rad. Um, and then yeah, on top of that, you know, we've been we've been fucking around with Rust and stuff in the background mm-hmm. here on PC and stuff, but. But really, like all of my game time, I've been trying to put in on the PS5 just because like it's I like sitting at my couch and playing Mm -hmm. with a controller in my hand at my TV, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My PC is super beefy and it can do amazing things with all these games. But like, it's just not the same experience to me. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Like, I just I don't know. For some reason, just PC gaming just doesn't it doesn't click with me the same way. Maybe because I spend all day at this computer I think that's already. It. That's, that's it yeah, for me. For sure. So I look for like everything on switch. Cause I'm like, I can be on the patio playing switch. I can be on my couch. Yeah. I can be in bed. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, my three yeah. places, I can be on the toilet. I can do, be <laughs> yeah. I can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> Omar, if you like Assassin's Creed and I don't know if you're a fan of breath of the wild, you should try out uh, Phoenix rising. Phoenix James, Rising. You got that, right? Which is, yeah, yeah which was going to be my looking for. I haven't started it. I got it on the Switch. Um, and so I want, I was like, I had only heard amazing things about this game. And everyone's like, it's like God, Greek Gods, Breath of the Wild kind of uh, mix cross, crossbreed or whatever. And I was like, oh, yes. And I want it on the Switch because I was like, I'll sacrifice the graphics for the ability to what Elise is saying, play it kind of anywhere and like pick it up and we can watch TV mm-hmm. and I can just kind of be like chipping away at it. So that's that's my next, but I've been playing uh, Wonderful 101, which I had Ooh. never played for the Wii U. <laughs> what, when was that? Um, yeah, Wii U. Amazing, amazing game. For Wii, the Wii U, U. <laughs> and, I, and I was always interested in it because it's kind of got a Power Rangers I owned Sentai it. vibe. Um, never played it. And then I, we but I got it. We did play it because I had it. <laughs> I never played it. I, I know for a, I know a hundred percent. I never played it. There's not a single element from this mm. game that I've recognized. I don't know. I've been playing. <laughs> yeah, I can assure you. Okay. Um, but uh, so uh, playing it for the first time, and it, it's fun. It's it's like such a wacky, weird experience. I I almost wish that I was playing it on the Wii U because some of the shape drawing is like really like. I have to draw the hammer five times to finally get it to be a mm-hmm. hammer because it's hard to draw with an analog stick. Um, but it's just, it's one of those games where you're playing, you're like, I can't believe someone thought of this. <laughs> like, Wait, what are you playing it on? Figured, uh, playing it on Switch. Oh, so they you ported it to the Switch. Um, I don't think so. I've been using the right stick the whole time to do stuff. I mean, oh, it's really? an action game too. So like, you have to do stuff. I guess I haven't really tried. Maybe you can. There's I think weird... you can because you you do that for the Wii U, you, like on the screen. You, yeah, you just right. Yeah. yeah, there's there's weird uh, Wii U artifacts because it is like a straight up port. They didn't do anything, 
So there's points where two menus will just like pop up screen over screen <laughs> on top of it. And you like have to hit a button to get rid of it. Or like there's certain points in the world where like the camera changes and then you see a map and the map you piecing them together would make sense if they were two separate screens. But they're like yeah. on top of each other. And so like I wish it was it's more like when you see a 3DS adaptation. emulator or whatever. <laughs> yeah, kind of. And so so that but that's why I'm playing. And then as soon as I finish that, I want to move on to Immortals Phoenix Rising. Um but enough about things that I'm looking forward to that you can play. <laughs> it's time to talk about things that we're all looking forward to that we can watch. Roll it, Cody. <laughs> Welcome to Mount Up for Morbius. Danny, when you were on this show all those months ago, did you think that the next time you came back, they would still be doing Mount Up for Morbius? <laughs> I had no clue. And let me tell you, when I saw the announcement on, online on Twitter, I was yeah. like, oh, man, poor James. Yeah. Poor James. <laughs> <laughs> <The whole time. laughs> yeah. You know, it's a funny. I'm really good about picking jokes that completely destroy my ass later on. Um, <laughs> the thing is, so, you, it's, yeah. it's you. It, you. You've created this incredible marketing machine for cats and for this movie and they're like you know what we're getting this we might as well yeah. delay the movie a couple years we got yeah. this free yeah. marketing vehicle that's happening is so popular yeah. <laughs> i should point out that it i think it has been a year since i've been doing mount up for morbius um it has been a year and so there is news it's not the best news but there is news um, Morbius has been delayed and then I struck through delayed and I wrote delayed again um, <laughs> originally scheduled for release on July 10th 2020 the film was pushed three weeks to July 31st 2020 no big deal um, but then uh, I wrote obviously COVID-19 ravaged the American film industry not unlike how a rare blood disease ravaged the body of Michael Morbius before an experimental procedure involving vampirism <laughs> turned him into the living vampire and the film was delayed to March 19th 2021 20- 21 so insane. you know you uh you're, you're offering them too much you're giving so, them too much for free so uh, you know a wide-eyed james Willem said march 2021 that's not so bad i'll keep chugging until then well here we are in january 2021 uh fast forward to only a few weeks ago and it was announced that morbius would be delayed again to october 8th 2021 the perfect Halloween treat, exclaimed a tearful James Willems, relatively unknown comedian and creator of the wildly popular in very small circles Mount Up for Morbius. Um, so, yeah, I was like, OK, well, I'll just you know what? Let's run out the summer. Why not? And then we'll have it for Halloween. Well, not only not only a few short Days went by before that was announced that January 2022 would be the new and latest, as of this recording, release date for the Morbius <laughs> film. James Holmes <laughs> promptly died of a heart attack. Um, that's the news. There's so lots of Morbius news, not necessarily what we wanted to hear. Um, and so we're going to forego any sort of informative sessions. Thank I have you. a lot. I have a lot of stuff to try and figure out. Because um, <laughs> I have a whole year. You have a lot of, of time, time now. <laughs> as of the time of this recording to figure out how I'm going to keep doing this segment for another year. But I'll tell you this much. It has brought in a new era. And that era is Mount Up for Morbius. Year two. <laughs> Roller Cody. Yes. yes. <laughs> Welcome to Mount Up for Morbius Year 2. That is, we'll be seeing more of that later on. I'm super happy to pop open the cork. Danny, I'm glad you were here for the christening of Mount Up for Morbius Year 2. I expect to have you back several more times yes. before yes. the film is released. It's um, an honor to be here, man, for the yes. world premiere. Thank you so much, Danny, for joining us for this episode of the Funhouse Podcast. Where can people find you, hear you, see you, get more of you? Yeah, so uh, you go so uh, go to any podcast app. Just search for Gamertag Radio, um, and make sure to download our podcast. is twice a week we release an episode. Also, uh, follow me yeah. on Twitter, Godfrey G O D F R E, and also um, 
later this week we have an announcement because our 16th anniversary is coming up next month oh my God. of our podcast and i'll hint it right here we're gonna have a pretty cool guest on our show oh that's cool. all i'll say hey, this person has never been on our show ever <laughs> that's Jared Leto. It. That's is it Jared that's Leto? he's gonna one up us for no, sure yeah. I'll, I'll let people guess i have nothing to say okay wow <laughs> do you think i could get jared leto on mount up for morbius before the movie comes out i think you can I'm putting out the call right now. <laughs> Wacky, you go subscribe to, to, to Gamer Tag Radio. Congratulations uh, on 16 years. Yeah. That's Congratulations. That's crazy. Yeah. That's the cra- crazy. The crazy thing, yesterday was my 20th anniversary as a content creator because I had an internet radio show before the podcast. So, wow. yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. And you said <laughs> yeah. you do two episodes a week? Two episodes a week, yeah. Because mm-hmm. well, you oh, had recently had the thousandth episode right that was last, i guess last recently, year but yeah that was last year. year yeah we had uh phil spencer on our fi- 15th anniversary of the show and mm-hmm. also 1000 episode oh, that's awesome yeah that's yeah. awesome that's well danny yeah. we absolutely love having you on we're gonna have you in, on again soon um great talking with you and uh everyone should s- subscribe to gamer tag radio and uh it's coming up on funhouse um we have a new merch collection coming down the pipe. I don't think we have anything to any pictures to show, but keep an eye we out for some. that. The the there's the I don't know <laughs> if it includes the beanie, but it should. The uh, Funhouse Americana <laughs> collection is coming soon. Uh, Ryan, we got Ryan Bar- Ryan's bargain bin T-shirts. Um, pick up a. Uh, I think they're stored in trash. They're flying right? out of the dumpster. Dumpster, yeah, dumpster. We'll pull them out of the dumpster for you. I guess either way, they're going to end up there. Um, but uh, and also check out Wrestling with the Week, a new podcast that I am doing with uh, Scorpio Sky of AEW, where we kind of chat about the last seven days. It's fun pop culture thing. If you like wrestling, if you don't like wrestling, I think you're going to like this podcast. Omar, Elise, Danny, thank you so much for coming on. This was a blast. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And we will see you next week. Thank you, James, for making this happen. Thank you, James. You're you're welcome. Thank you, Cody. And thank Thank you, Cody. Cody. Thank Thank you, Cody, for directing this episode. Thanks for my beanie.